Welcome to another devotional thought as we prepare our hearts and minds for our day of praying and fasting. Let's look into the Word of God and see what He has to say to us today. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, it reads, Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Pray with me as we consider the topic seized but not silent. Seized but not silent. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is your time. We are listening. Please send us your Holy Spirit to make your word come alive and to transform us by your word. This I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In our world today, when things go wrong, when we are hurt, or when someone we love or admire is hurt, the trending response is something called cancel culture. You're publicly called out and ostracized as a result. You're thrust out of either online circles or social circles, even professional circles. You may even lose your job. You're definitely going to lose your reputation. And if cancel culture could have its way, you lose all reason to be alive. You're canceled. Well, in the book of 2 Kings, we meet a little girl who has great reasons to cancel everyone in her current situation. If she lived in 2021, Naaman would be canceled. Mrs. Naaman would be canceled. The army that captured her would be canceled. The king would be canceled. The guy who cleans the stalls for the horses would be canceled. She might even cancel her parents for not keeping her safe. And while I am in no way endorsing kidnapping, nor am I making a statement on the concept of canceling, I am saying that there is something unique in this story that deserves a second look. Straight off the bat, I must admit that if it had been me in this situation, I might have reacted with maybe a little bad mind. I might have thought of ways that I could get revenge. I might have been sour. I probably would have focused more on the problems and not try to figure out why God had me there. But this little girl realized right away that she was on mission. She knew that the mission was not dependent on her condition. She knew that caution shouldn't determine her action. She knew that her position was not an indication of God's protection or affection. Taking a closer look at the text gives us a powerful illustration from this captured child. Now let's look at verse 2 a little closer. Now, bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She served Naaman's wife. She didn't do the bare minimum with a grumpy, angry attitude. She didn't spend her time plotting her escape and nursing hatred and bitterness. She served Mrs. Naaman, the wife of her captor. She served to the best of her ability. In fact, she was serving out of the overflow. She served from a place of love for God. She didn't serve because she was a captive and had no choice. She served because she realized that this was the very nature of the assignment that she was on. She was on a service call. 
she served because she knew that though she was seized, she didn't have to sulk. She could share of her very self and serve by stating the solution to Naaman's situation. She was seized, but she wasn't silent. Her actions were announcing that the Almighty has the answer. In verse 3, she said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he could cure him of his leprosy. Because she served and she didn't keep silent, because she shared what little information she had, when you read the rest of the chapter, Naaman's wife believed her. Naaman himself believed her. The king of Aram believed her. Then the king of Israel got reminded of who God is, which activated and propelled the prophet Elisha. Naaman's servants encouraged him because of her word. The people accompanying Naaman encountered God at the Jordan because of her word. And Naaman the leper went down into the Jordan seven times he came up shouting oh Lord I've seen my change because she served and didn't keep silent leprosy itself had to flee so you might be bent by the background you came from but you're not broken. You might be captured by difficult circumstances beyond your control. You don't have to cancel life. You might be seized by situations that threaten to suffocate you. Remember this. When Jesus has supreme sovereignty over your story, you don't have to be silent. In fact, you'll be like the prophet Jeremiah with the word of God in your heart as a burning fire shut up in your bones. You can't keep silent. My friends, wherever you go, you're on assignment. Don't stay silent. Whatever comes your way, trust Jesus. He has solutions to all your situations because nothing takes him by surprise. Let your life shout. You're on assignment. Dear viewer, you might be seized by situations that make it seem like you have no support. I implore you to set your eyes on your Savior. Serve your neighbor as unto your creator. And remember, you are on assignment. So never stay silent. God bless you today and always.